Texas Longhorns lose out on yet another option at the DL spot. And I'm just going to say it. I think it's time to be worried. Welcome back to another episode of Longhorn Central. My name, of course, is Sonny Verma. You can find me at the Sunny V or right down there at Horn Central. If you would like to support the channel, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Friendly reminder, every Monday night around 6 o'clock, Matthew Miller and Mark Rogers host Texas Longhorns Live, where they kind of tackle the biggest topics of the week in Longhorn Nation, and sometimes they bring on a special guest, so make sure you t- tune into that. Today's episode is going to be talking about Josiah Sharma, the four-star defensive lineman who most everyone thought was going to become the newest Texas Longhorn commit, but decided at the 11th hour, and when I say 11th hour, I'm talking about 11.59 p.m. to commit to the Oregon Ducks. And now it seems like the Longhorns have once again struck out on one of their focuses for the defensive line. And we've got to start wondering inwardly why what's going on why of all the positions that the texas longhorns have it's the defensive line where they just can't seem to nab their highest priorities we know it's not a lack of trying the staff knows especially i would say in particular on this team upcoming it's one of the three four best teams in the country but the noticeable weakness is probably at that defensive line spot So knowing that, and we know the amount of effort this Texas staff is putting into that position, it's puzzling and it's troubling that with all the resources this university has, that they have not been able to lock that position down. So what is happening? I would argue that the defensive line position is probably the hardest one of any of the positions to fill, especially in the modern-day college football era, because there's so few difference makers, elite of the elite, for a program like Texas, that those that are very, very good are going to require a lot of NIL money. And even when they're offered a lot of NIL money, There will always be another team, in this case, a team like Oregon, who can come around and offer even more. This is a super competitive landscape. All bets are off. This is what college football is right now. And again, we can't complain about it. The Texas Longhorns, more than 99.9% of the teams in the country can take advantage of this NIL era. And they do. They just seem to have found a little bad luck when it comes to a recent stretch they are in in trying to get defensive linemen. Texas doesn't quite have the advantage that they do with other positions when it comes to the defensive line prospects in the state of Texas. Texas, for the most part, can kind of pick and choose who they want when it comes to the home state and they really haven't had the opportunity to nab those guys in the state of Texas. I believe last check, they've only brought in two guys locally at that position. Correct me if I'm wrong in the chat. This was obviously a quickly researched video uh, before I came on. But normally when you think of the state of Texas, what they do is they produce football players. And one distinct advantage in college football is that when you're the hometown school, when you're the state school, the locals will tend to look at you more favorably. You have that home state advantage. And in this particular case, because of just the lack of prospects, Texas hasn't been able to utilize that advantage for the DL position. So if there's not enough talent at home, what happens? You're going to have to go out of state. You know, you'll have to go to the neighboring 
states. Well, the neighboring states, well, that's SEC country. Yes, you are SEC country now, but my point is the SEC country, they take their football seriously and they have the same resources, maybe not the exact same, but very close when it comes to resources uh, on the NIL front to go after that same top talent. So if, if there's a really good defensive lineman in the state of Louisiana that you really like, guess where he's probably already inclined to go? LSU. If there's a really good defensive lineman in the state of Georgia, well, guess who has that home state advantage? The Bulldogs. Texas obviously has a very strong NIL game, but with the way things have been going recently, they're going to have to go above and beyond in order to match up what some of their competitors are doing. Just look at the case of Josiah Sherman. If there's one school in the country who probably comes close to competing with Texas when it comes to the NIL game, it's the Nike school in the Northwest, Oregon. And they've got a lot of positive momentum themselves. Dan Lanning up there, he's running a machine. And so when the checks are blank, that puts you in the game. So you start to wonder, is are the checks blank for Texas or not? Are they going to have to kind of self-evaluate and decide, hey, have to overspend for this particular position just to make up for the lack of progress that they've made? The other option is possibly focusing on not necessarily the highest four stars or five stars in the country when it comes to the defensive line position and trusting your coaching to develop those guys. You know, maybe you go after the lower four stars, the higher three stars who will be interested in the NIL money that you can kind of flex over the competitors and kind of just trust that, hey, our coaching staff will get you to a level to play championship football. But again, that's going to be tough because the guys on the other side of the field, the Georgias, the Alabamas, you're still going to be going up against five stars in that position. It's tough because Texas is almost a victim of its own situation. If this was a not quite championship contending team, let's just say one tier below, all these strikeouts wouldn't matter so much. You would be content, you know, winning 10 games a year and possibly contending for a playoff spot. But that's not what Texas Longhorns football is. There's only one aspiration, and that's to be raising that trophy at the end of the season. You can't just sit around and wait for the state of Texas to produce more high-quality defensive linemen. And it's not like defensive linemen are so readily available in the transfer portal. Again, maybe outside quarterback, defensive linemen are like gold in the transfer portal economy. If a kid is good, first, the, t the school that he plays for is not going to let him go. And even if he does, you're going to have be having a half dozen of the blue blood programs of just almost unlimited budget programs going after the same guy, especially if he's proven already that he can play at the college football level. At the high school level, it's different because you're kind of throwing money at an unproven talent. If you're a coaching staff and you see that a guy has proven himself on the college football level at that premium position, that guy can demand whatever amount of commas he wants. And is Texas ready to play that game? My question is, does Texas have a choice? Once again, thank you for tuning in to Longhorn Central. My name is Sonny Verma. You can find me at Horn Central or The Sunny V. On your way out, if you can do me a huge favor, just hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We try to throw out some content for you every single day at this channel. Football season is right around the corner. And the amount of content that's going to be produced on this channel 
is going to continue to be more and more frequent. So if there's something you want to watch, let me know in the chat. If there's a particular topic you want me to discuss, let us know and we'll do it for you. This is your channel. That'll be all for today. And we'll see you in our next video.